Pakistan plans to tighten its control of internet activity through a nationwide web control system. News outlet Coda Story says it's gained exclusive access to documents showing that Islamabad contracted a Canadian company called Sandvine to help build the system. The surveillance infrastructure would monitor all of the country's incoming and outgoing internet traffic. DW's very own Umar Ali was one of the reporters who worked with CODA's story on the investigation. Umar, tell us a little bit more about what you found. Yeah, so I would start with saying that this is an unprecedented move um, in Pakistan in this current environment. Um, and the system in general aims at curbing gray traffic, which some experts say might also include encrypted messaging services like WhatsApp. And they also say that the that the equipment provided um, by Sandwine is capable of redirecting and blocking the internet traffic in real time, meaning the government can essentially intercept the internet traffic at any point and can do anything with it. Um, and like previously in Egypt and Turkey, uh, in fact, the same technology has been used to install spyware in the user's devices. Um, and I would also like to add that the same technology um, which is which Sandwine is providing in Pakistan has been used in China as well, where the government um, can filter out certain keywords and the content containing certain keywords and block access to websites in real time. Um, so and 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 after after all of this, the system also raises concerns about privacy because the government and some private companies will now have access to the Internet data from millions of users in Pakistan. Now, Pakistan is a democracy, uh, but last year, uh, Voice of America was blocked uh, in uh, the country. And a few times in the past, we've seen YouTube also blocked. Uh, and most recently, I believe a committee to protect journalists a member was kicked out of the country. What's going on here? Yeah, so things have indeed changed, uh, I would say, drastically over the last few years in Pakistan, which, as you said, is a democracy in principle. Uh, but critics say that the powerful military in Pakistan is actually calling the shots from behind the scenes. Um, and as you pointed out, press freedom and, and freedom of expression in general are are on de in decline in Pakistan. So people are now really worried because for many, uh, Internet is perhaps the only um, source left that remains relatively uns uncensored, unlike the traditional news media. And some right. ana analysts actually believe, um, yeah. Well, let's talk about authoritarian tech in general. Uh, you have a Canadian company exporting to a democracy. Often we think of China doing this kind of thing, but uh, the surveillance tech business is a global business, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's very striking indeed. Um, and and it's very interesting to see a Canadian company exporting its surveillance tools to countries like Pakistan, where the freedom of expression is routinely violated. And Sand, Sandvine is, in fact, indirectly linked to, to the same parent company as the NSO Group, which is well known for its Pegasus spying software. And in fact, similar pr programs have been used by several Middle Eastern companies uh, like uh, um, uh, and, and Sandvine and other companies are happily, uh, ha they happily profit off of selling their services to these regimes. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I would like to add that Sandvine publicly committed in 2012 to not work with the government of Pakistan. Right. But we found evidence suggesting it was offering same service, some services in Pakistan dating back to at least 2016. Umar Ali, thank you.